Hey, how you doing, everybody? So today, we're going to be looking at Netflix's new original film, Outside the Wire, starring Anthony Mackie. And this is going to be my first review of a 2021 film. So, are we starting off with a really good one? Or a suck fest? Well, let's find out. Outside of the Wire takes place in the year 2036, after basically a bunch of diseases and warfare has virtually destroyed a bunch of the planet, and we are and the U.S. military is dealing with these things called Krosnys, or whatever the fuck they're called. They're basically terrorists, led by Victor Klovas, Kovas, I don't know. And our main hero is a drone pilot who, after messing up and disobeying orders during a during a battle with said Krasnys or whatever they're called, he is paired up with a an android of sorts, played by Anthony Mackie. And they go outside the wire to find out more about Clovaz's, I think, is his name, his plans, and try to stop him. At least that's what it seems like at first. So I wasn't sure what I was gonna, what to think of this movie at first. Like when I first heard of it, I thought it might be an okay movie, so I decided to to watch this one to sit through it. I was expecting just another lame dystopian sci-fi movie, and that's exactly what this is. This movie is bad. This is not a good movie. It's I'll, I'll start with the positives. Anthony Mackie pulls in a really good performance. Uh, most of the actors don't, but I'll get more into that later. The action sequences are done fairly well. I say that because, uh, unlike Mulan, where it used quick cutting to just the worst effect I've ever seen, this one does quick cutting right, especially in the opening action sequence. But then it gets to, when it gets to the hand-to-hand combat scenes, it becomes a disorienting mess. When it's during the shootouts, the quick cutting's done very well. That's how you do quick cutting correctly. But when it gets to the hand to hand scene, it looks like Batman Begins. It's all shot in close ups, a bunch of shaky cam, a bunch of cuts. You can't see what's happening. And I know this is okay, co- decent choreography, so I don't know why they're masking it with such lame editing. And yeah, that's about all the positives I have. This is a pretty bad movie. So, the first thing I'm going to get into is the plot, which is a disorienting mess. There there are so many twists that get thrown in at the last minute, and you can tell we're made up on the fly. This script looks looks and feels like it was made up on the fly. Like, they wrote one draft and just came up with a bunch of shit as they went along. In the third act alone, this throws maybe four or five twists at you, regarding the android, Mackie's character, the android Captain Leo. And it is such, it is just such a mess. Like, he he constantly tricks our main hero, Thomas Harp, and it, it looks like they just came up with this as they went along. Because, big shock, if you, if you haven't already guessed, even though I did when I first started watching the movie, Leo ends up being the villain of the movie. And he ends up trying to launch a nuke at the U.S. after previously working with Harp to pretend to try to stop Clovaz, or Kovaz, I don't know how to say his name, or, or I don't remember it, to stop him from getting the nukes. But it turns out Leo was working with Kovaz, and he's working the the Krasnys and the Resistance group, because of course there's a Resistance group, even those of the fucking military, against one another, because he's double-crossing both of them, essentially. And this is just... I, I, I like the idea of... Cause normally, the military is seen as either incompetent or the villains. In this one, the U.S. military are the heroes. And I actually like that. It makes our military seem more competent than most other movies do. I'm looking at you, Michael Bay. Transformers and Pearl Harbor. So, it, it, at least it makes our military more competent... But it also makes everybody, everybody in this movie, like, all the actors outside of Mackie, feels like they're giving it 50%. 
But even to, and it's not even just the actors, it's the characters too. And the opening scene where our character blows up a launcher because it's gonna basically kill all the people, the, all the soldiers that they have there, while he's flying the drone, drone over there, he's sitting there eating gummy bears. I'm serious. He's sitting there eating gummy bears, sitting there, and every time they talk through the comms on here, while he's flying it, they're talking in this, they're all talking in this monotone voice like this. Both Harp and the General Eckhart, or whatever his title is, are just talking in this bland, monotone delivery the entire time. Why am I pretending I'm holding one of the things? <laughs> but that's the performance throughout the entire film. That's most of the actors in this, too. And, the, but while I said it makes our military seem more competent, it also makes them look incredibly stupid at times, since A, they're easily tricked b multiple times, and B, they're mad at the guy for sacrificing two lives to save 38 instead of all 40 getting killed. They say, they say that the guy, down, that the, the leader who was in that, the leader of that group would have tried to save all 40. Well, guess what? He wouldn't have been able to. But our military uh, in this movie is too stupid to see that. So you know what? I just realized my competence point I gave the, the military competence point I gave this gone. Did I just remembered that gone. And like I said, the hand-to-hand -hand combat scenes are absolutely a mess. But thankfully, there aren't that many of those. And there are a lot of there are a lot of characters in this movie. There are a lot of characters, and most of them don't have defined characteristics. Like, Captain Leo, he's just this dick android. And oh, one thing I want to throw out, this is an already movie, obviously. There are, there are way too many F-bombs in this. I don't usually complain about this, but good God, I swear every other sentence someone uses an F-bomb. I'm, and I, you know what, to counter this, I'm not going to use an F-bomb in this video. Normally I do, I'm not going to, to show that, to counter it. Because there are every other sentence someone uses an F-bomb. And it's ridiculous. Well, you know what? I can deal with bland characters and poorly directed hand-to-hand -hand combat scenes and a bunch of that, and a bunch of curse words. I, I can deal with that. What I can't live with is just a bad script. It's just... The, the script is... A, this entire movie is disjointed and non-functional. This doesn't feel like a cohesive narrative at all. This feels like everything was just made up on the go. Like, they just... It, it feels like a lot of this movie, they're like they were writing the script while they were filming, and randomly threw in a bunch of twists just to say, ooh, gotcha. So the same thing that happened with Last Jedi, except not nearly as annoying. But it feels like they're just throwing in a bunch of twists just to say, gotcha. But th this one, it's... Never, and it, it, they flash back a couple times while they're explaining what, what their, what the twist is. They flash back to show, to show it's like, yeah, we planned this out, when it really doesn't, when it, you can tell they didn't plan this out properly. And if they did, they didn't do a very good job of showing it. There were no hints given whatsoever. And, because, okay, I'm gonna get into spoilers here. One of the twists was that, the fact that the android, the he calls something about a command paradox, where I, I don't even want to go into it. it. It makes less sense. It makes less sense than Tenet, so I'm not even gonna try to get into it there. But he has he has Harp remove what he says is his tracker, so that Kovas can't detect him. And what it actually was was his the thing that makes him have to take orders from humans. So, that basically removed it. It's like the four, it's like the prime directives from RoboCop. Also, I want to say, there are things called gumps in this movie, which is a stupid name, by the way. Are these little, like, robot things that have machine guns with them? That looks like those, that looks like those stupid things that, um, wh whatever the company was called, uh, what was the company called in, uh, RoboCop? It was, was it THI? I don't know. No, THI was Max Steel. I don't know, but whatever the, whatever the company in, oh, OCP, Omni Consumer Products, thank you, whatever those stupid robots they made, they look like those robots that they made in the reboot of RoboCop, they look like they are just ripped off, not, they don't look like RoboCop, they look like the stupid 
things that OCP, the stupid robots that OCP makes in the remake. They, they look like those, and the, the, the pro, and also I want to say with these, the special effects are wretched. They look, they, I mean, they don't look awful, but it's the same problem I had with the, uh, the, the Dark Troopers in, uh, Mandalorian. They don't look that bad, but whenever they have to move or something, it looks so janky. It looks, uh, like, the CGI whenever it has to move, it looks, they, like, they move way too quick. It's like, like, the thing with Mandalorian, when they were punching the thing, most robots would go like this, robots like that, they go, they, they go way too fast, because they don't have the, uh, uh, they don't have the budget to make it look convincing. At least not entirely. This has an even worse problem. Because it doesn't... Because it doesn't... It barely looks... They don't even look like they're there most of the time. It, it looks in, so incredibly fake. And they move so awkwardly. And whenever they shoot the gun, you can see the... You can tell the CGI of the end of the gun where it has a little thing at the end when they, ever they shoot a gun. It looks so incredibly fake. And... Oh, good. My fridge stuff stopped running over there. So there's no more sound back there. Good. I don't know if you guys even heard that back there, but not the problem. So, yeah, back to Leo. But what it turns out is actually, so he can go rogue now, so he no longer has to take orders from Harp. So, and it, it feels like they came up with this at the last minute. And also, when they're at that bank, when they said, Leo says Kovaz was there, and that he had the the codes for the nuke. But he wasn't there because there's like, oh, no, no, he's not there. They, the military was aiming for, was trying to kill Leo. Was trying to blow up Leo. They're not. They weren't trying to get Kovaz. And the entire time, Harp is trying to save some civilians. And, and another problem with this: the resistance is completely freaking useless. Because I'll tell you why. After the the bank, after the military blows up the bank, because they think, because they think they blew up Leo, Harp is captured by the resistance. And what do they do? They do jack shit. I'm serious. They 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 sit down with a conversation telling them no Leo's with the resistance, he's betraying Kovaz. When really he was also betraying Kovaz and he's working with he has his own agenda. And Harp knows that, but are they gonna listen to him? No. Who listens to him? The military. And really they shouldn't. But they really have no reason to listen to him, but they do, which is fine, but the resistance does absolutely nothing here. We don't see them in action. We don't see them fighting Kovaz. We we don't see them outside of this one scene. I mean, we see the, the person Sophia that he's talking to. We see her earlier quite a bit, but we never get the sense that she's working with the resistance, even though it's kind of implied, but it's never said outright. And then they show up this one scene, and they never show up again. Ever. So, that was a major letdown. And, you know, one thing I will say that will surprise me is that they didn't kill Harp. So I know a lot of these kinds of movies, especially with, like, Netflix stuff, they like to kill off their main hero. Like, they did that with Extraction, and I thought they did it really well. They killed off their uh, character, Tyler Rake, I think was his name, the Hemsworth character. They killed him off at the end, which I thought was actually pretty ballsy. Because a lot of movies like, like that like to do that nowadays, especially movies like this. So I'm surprised they didn't go that route. And, but that also leaves it kind of a lame ending, where the final shot's him after he, after they blow up the facility and, and disarm the nukes. The final shot is just him walking through this, like, bland-looking grass field or whatever in this shitty-looking landscape, and just him slowly walking towards the camera until it fades to black. No resolution, no epilogue, nothing. We don't know what the hell happens afterward. And they they make a big sense that he he's he that he's engaged to this woman and that he needs to survive so he can go back and get married, but we never see her. Well, he has a picture of her that they show maybe twice, and the first time is just for some jokes with what he's talking to Leo, and we we never physically see her, which I thought was really stupid. Like if you're gonna throw this stake in the plot. You could actually show the stake in the plot instead of just telling us a couple times, or at least make it a bigger deal. Like you could, I would, you would be totally forgiven to just forget about that and not, or not even give a shit. Because I sure as hell didn't. I don't know why I have to care about this if they're not even going to show the actual stake. They never show her. They never physically show her. They don't show her with heart. They don't show her like at home worried about him. They don't show her at all except this picture. Ow! Damn! Pop my finger. 
So th that lowers the stakes a lot because it makes me not care, especially when every person in this movie is an asshole. Except maybe his co-drone pilot, Bale, but she only shows up twice. In the opening scene and in the final fight. That's the only time she shows up, and so... Yeah, that, that was a waste of a, of a character that was probably the only decent character in the movie. Because even Harp's kind of a dick. So, final verdict, don't watch this movie. I really recommend you don't. It, it, it's not necessarily harmful for, to you, like, but it's not a good movie. I would recommend... My recommendation, go watch Extraction from last year. If you, ha if you haven't seen Extraction, go watch that. And if you have seen it, go watch it again. Don't watch this piece of crap. Really don't. So, that's all I'm going to say. I'm going to give Outside the Wire a D. Man, I didn't want to start this movie this year off so negative, but here we are. Huh, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to hit that like button down below if you like. Hit the subscribe button down below and comment what movies you want me to review this year. And, and tell me what you thought of Outside the Wire if you watched it. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Do you really not care about my opinion? Well, if you don't care about my opinion, then why are you here? So, that's all I'm going to say. I'll see you all next time. Bye.